Welcome back, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at error handling in Flow Designer. So we're going to look at that little switch and that little section at the bottom with error handling, but we're also going to look at some try logic and simple values to use. So join me on the platform, or let's go find out. In today's video, we're going to be doing some error handling stuff in Flow Designer. But before we really get started, you know what to do. If you're not yet subscribed, please consider doing so. If you are, smash the bell icon, share it with all your service now buttons. Let's dive into the tool. Let's do a bit of a demo. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's go through this. So I've created a flow for the purpose of this demonstration. Quite simply, what it does, let's walk through it, right? So. When an incident is up updated, well, when a state of an incident is updated, it's going to start doing this flow logic. So it's going to look up for an incident record. It's actually going to look up to see, have I got a, an incident where the parent is the one that triggered it? It's also going to do some weird stuff, right? The keen eye um, of, of you will notice this. It's going to look up that record, but where the state is new and the state is closed. So we know that is not possible. Why am I doing that? One, because I thought it would be a bit of fun. But two, I want to force an error. The whole point in this is to see how we handle er errors in Flow Designer, right? So I want to create that error. Don't do this in real life. So, um, then what we're going to do is go and update an incident record. Say, boom, I found it. So we're going to update that parent when we found it. But of course, we're not going to do that because we know it's never going to be found. So what we've got at the bottom here, and you may have noticed it but never really played with it, is this error handling switch. Now, what does that do? In short, when we tick that, it allows us to run some logic in this section underneath here to handle the errors. So, you know, when you, when you run an error, um, a flow before or you've seen one in the execution, it's got a big red error at the top, right? And we'll show that in a minute. Um, and it just kind of fails and does nothing. Well, this allows you to say, well, when that error occurs, do this in this section. And you can do multiple things. You know, you've got access to all the actions you have done in the top section. So if you're a coder, I guess this is like your catch section in a try and catch block. If you don't know about those, go and read about them. I'll put something in the description. However, in this error handling section, it, it, we've got the same capabilities we have um, in the top bit up here. But it's specific to when an error happens. And in this section here, if you move over to the right hand side, we've got the error handler. So we've got these, um, or this error status object with these attributes that kind of input into that section that we can then get at. So in its simplest form, what I've done here is I've created a log. And I've said log, where, um, log an error to the system logs and call it error log found. And let's just remove that. And what am I putting in that? I'm putting in error handler message, okay, which is the same as this over here. This is really simple stuff. The one thing I do want to point out is in the error handling section underneath, you've only got access, uh, access, the ability to add 10 different activities in there, 10 different actions. So just be wary of that. And, and we'll come on to what you can do to get around that in a bit. But let's just save this and let's just see what it does. So when I reactivate it, no, let's just test it, right? So when I run this, that first um, action, action number one, is going to error. At least I really hope it does. Here we go, error. So this is what I was talking about before, the error that you'll see at the top. Error, um, completed error caught. But now you see what down here, look, completed that core action in the error handler. So this log has been uh, created down here. We see logs. No record found. Of course it's not found. Nothing's got a state of new and, and um, complete. Let's get rid of that. Let's take it to the next level, right? The next level here is we've now output a log, which is great. It's in the system logs. But what happens if we want to do something a bit more fancy? We can create, if you look here, we can create a subflow, a specific error handler subflow um, to then call. And this is an architectural decision, right? is how do you set up those error handlers across your platform? Do you do it based on process? Do you do it based on product, for example? You might want to have an error handler for um, 
incident or problem will change. Is it all the same error handler? You do it based on scope. So perhaps you might create a new application. You have a specific error handler for that. These are all things that you need to consider and be aware of and have those conversations about. Okay. I don't think there's any right or wrong answer. Um, there are some, some considerations, but it's, it's just something to think about because the downside of not thinking and having some kind of standard policy or architectural policy, best practice, whatever you want to call it on your platform is that all developers or consultants will do their own thing. Right. Um, and I'm going to be honest, the reason I'm doing this video, because a lot of people won't even do the error handle bit, right? We're very good at putting try catch blocks or error handling in our codes and script includes, but in here it's kind of, oh, what does that do? How does it work? So this is why I'm doing this, right? But I will say there are other videos on YouTube um, around this, right? And and there's probably far more detailed than, than I, but I just want to get the message out there is to start using it, start having a play, see what it does. Right. Anyway, what was I saying? We can create our own, its own subflow. So I have done that. So I'm going to, I've created a specific error handler subflow. Okay. And I'm just going to put in the inputs of error handling code. So that's an integer and the error handling message. And again, this video isn't really around how you create your subflow. Um, but I'll, I'll show you how I've done that anyway. So let's just save that. And then we'll go and uh, have a quick look at that subflow. So what's it? What do I call it? Error handler. Neat title, eh? Right, Eralda. This is very simple. So this is a subflow which takes in two inputs, which is the error code and the error message, integer and string. And they're both mandatory. Simply, quite simply, what it's going to do is it's going to create an incident. So we're going to assign, uh, create an incident to the assignment group of service nerd admin team, because why not? Short description, description, caller, your flow died. Yeah, because why not? So again, this is a simple concept. This is about, this is my error handling policy on my platform. My company, my service node company have decided this is how I'm going to handle errors. Yours might um, handle them differently. So how about discussion? There are no fancy things you can do in, um, in here. Again, I've seen some great videos where you can, before you create the incident record, you go and look at the flow context ID. So you can actually put a bit more information in the incident record that says, hey, here's the flow that triggered it. Here's the sys ID of the flow that triggered it. And hey, there's a click link that I can take you direct to there. So go and check those out. That'll, that'll give you that, that um, extra info. But I wanted to do something simple so you guys could say, hey, it's not that difficult. Let's go and play. Oof, we get it. So now we've got a log and the error handler. And it's when that error occurs, it's going to kick off this subflow. So let's, um, did we save it? I don't know. Let's do it and find out. So we, we run that again. Again, we're expecting it to error. Okay, we've run the flow. We have errored. The log has continued, but now we've got the error handler of the subflow that's ran. Now remember, there's only one activity in there. Okay, let's go and see subflow context. Great record. Oh look, there we've got our incident. So let's have a click on that. It's created our incident. Should we open it? Yeah, may as well. We're here anyway. Okay, so now we've got the incident created, error flow details, no record found, code one. Okay, so and this has assigned it to my team. So there we have it. A subflow, error handler subflow that we pulled from a parent flow. So now we've taken a look at that error handler section on the bottom. How does the try logic come into it? I said that right at the start. How do we apply that? Well, let's go back and have a look at how we can adjust the flow to use the try logic. Okay, so this is our starting point. We've got our flow with our error handling section. Now, if we go up here with flow logic, we've got try. Okay, you might not have noticed that before, but why don't you try it out? What this means really, it's like, a, again, I've mentioned it before, but it's like a try catch logic in, in uh, when we're doing coding, right? It allows us to try a section of things but if there's an uh, a, an error occurs then do something else right so try a section of things in here we've got a little plus and if an error occurs then do that so we know an error is going to occur here right so let's just move some stuff around so let's put that in there move those and update record we can do that there okay 
So let's have a look at what we've done there. We're saying try to look up the incident where the parent is all that triggered it and the state is something that's never going to happen. We know this is going to error, right? But if an error occurs in that step, which is this try step, then update the incident record, right? So update the incident record, or update record. Here we go. Um, let's update the parent record. Um, and we'll update it with... Um, let's put some work notes in there. Work notes is... Um, oh, no. Okay. Okay. Let's just, for now, let's save it and see what happens. Okay. Answers or put something in the comments to what you think is going to happen. So we've got try. We're going to try something. If an error occurs, update the incident. And we've got the error handler still active, right? So let's go ahead and run this test. Okay, now we're fitting. Are we still going to error? We have. We've got error here. Ah, but this time, it didn't run the error handler, right? Even though we've got an error, before it was triggering the trigger. Before it was triggering the error handler, now it's not. But it is saying if an error occurs, then go into this. So does that mean we need that error handler in this occasion? Probably not, right? So if we, what happens, let's just validate that theory. If we deactivate that, save it again, meaning we don't really need the error handler. What we'll expect to find now it's pretty much the same thing, right? Then we're going to look at one more thing before we finish up. Yeah, it's not run. And it didn't run before, okay? Because we've switched it off. The one thing I do want to draw your attention to as well, right? Is, I guess what we're doing in this instance is we're trying to handle the errors before the errors are caught in our error handler, right? So we're trying to, we're trying to do it before, um, before the last measure of, the um, error handler. If we go in here, we have this section here, or this tick box here, don't fail on error. So I'll tell you what, let's tick that, and let's give that a shot. See how that changes. Let's turn the error handler back on. Let's see what happens. Again, a lot of this is, let's just do something simple like this and just see how it works. So let's run that. Okay, what do we think? Here we go. So what we've done now is it's not errored. It's completed. That's interesting. So in this instance, our error handler has not worked because we've told it don't create an error. Don't fail an error. Don't, don't create an error for this instance. Right? But instead, it's not found it, not errored, Therefore, the update record does not happen because there's no error in that try. The last thing I'm going to try, no pun intended. Let's go back. Like, let's duplicate this action. And we're going to move that into here. So that off. Last thing to happen. Right, we've got a... Don't fail on error. We've got an update after that. What do we think is going to happen? Let's check it out. Again, no error. Let's take a look at this. Hang on. Let's see if I can get that over there. Take a look at this. Look up record. We know that's not going to work properly because we've made it not work. Two states that don't um, have any relationship to each other. But it now runs the update straight after. Right, but it doesn't run that if that error occurs because there is no error. Interesting. So what does this all really mean? Well, I guess it means that one, Flow Designer has error handling capability. Two, it's actually quite simple to get your head around. Three, I would urge you to go and create yourself a perhaps a test flow and just muck about with what different capabilities you've got and what it means to you, right? Or is consider how you can apply that across the platform that your own platform that you've got if you're a customer or if you're a partner, the project that you're perhaps working on. Five, if there is, is there any platform policies that are already in place that you need to be aware of in terms of error handling? But number six, whenever you're working on a flow, even if it's a new one you're creating or one that you're inheriting or one that you're having to work on, consider the what if. What if something happens at this stage? 
what if an error does occur do we need to do anything with it and start asking those questions when you're in a kind of story refinement as well so i hope you found it useful if you haven't yet subscribed please consider doing so smash the bell icon give it a like share it with all your service now buddy but the other thing is make sure you check out the service dubs podcast with james downs and i every other wednesday where we talk about all things service until then i've been russ and this is service dubs